Welcome, everybody. This is Hugh Massey, the chairman and founder of DNA Behaviour International. And today I'm delighted to be hosting another identity conversation. And I have the great pleasure to have with me Mike Baduzzi. And I've known Mike ever since I came to the United States 20 or so years ago on the journey of starting a behavioural sciences company and wanting to understand the human dimensions of wealth and help clients understand that. And Mike was on that journey as well and, and our paths collided and uh, we've been great friends and collaborators uh, ever since. And Mike uh, has founded a company called Da Vinci Global Consulting. So welcome, Mike. It's fantastic to be here with you. Thank you, you. And you know, you uh, played a pivotal role in, in the last 20 years of my life. So I wanna thank you for that, for the work you do, which I use all the time with my clients. So thanks. Yeah, no, it's been it's been a wonderful journey, and I think it's got got a long way to go yet too. So uh, we're still I'm, both I'm young and that. healthy. I'm <laughs> in for that. Yeah. So, Mike, why don't you tell tell us a little bit about your uh, earlier life and career, and and how you've progressed to to having this great business, Da Vinci Global, uh, da Vinci Global Consulting. Well, you uh, you know, early on, I guess it started. You know, my parents were. Um, you know, I grew up in an environment with my parents where they lived apart. They were somewhat separated all the time, and that created an environment that um, didn't allow for a lot of trust in, in that situation. But, you know, when you're living a life and you're going through your childhood, that's your normal. And so um, it wasn't until later I realized a little bit about why I kind of took on a uh, more of a thought of I need to uh, do things to be accepted rather than just be and be myself. And so uh, that set uh, kind of a groundwork in there. And then, you know, my first and second grade teacher created an environment around the Knights of the Round Table. And so you progress through all of those positions. And that really at a young age has impacted me throughout my life. It's been a theme, uh, actual theme. And even the fraternity I joined and other things that happened in my life where that thread it, uh, is run through my life to where, you know, I became more of a romantic. It was more of about gallantry and about, you know, fundamental things that made me who I've become. So, and, and tied with that was kind of my intrigue with Solomon, who, you know, I was told was the wisest man that ever lived. So I thought, well, if he's the wisest man, he's probably a good teacher and I need to think about that. And that kind of led me on my spiritual adventure at a young person, a young age. And, um, and, and so as I, you know, I had a pretty normal childhood. And then when I became um, a teenager, really started wanting to press forward and, and really be determined to accomplish a lot. And uh, so I became the captain of the football team, the president of the high school fraternity, um, the 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 award in my national fraternity in high school is kind of the the number one guy that carried over into my college where I was president of fraternity for a couple of years, president of inter fraternity console. So anything I put my mind to, I, I could achieve. And, and that included a lot of material possessions, even though we were upper upper middle class when we were growing up. But my father passed away at 16 and then financially things became went the other direction. So um so that's just a little bit about those younger years that I think shape a lot of who I am today. Yeah, so in that you really were always a leader, but you've had, uh, um, you know, the shaping sort of thinking at, at, at school, I think, with the Knights of the Round Table uh, seemed to put a lot of foundation into your into your thinking. And uh, Yeah, it's it was something that uh, I, I guess if I had to say one person that had that influence was her. Yeah, yeah, being that school teacher. Yeah. Yeah. So how does that thinking come into your work now when you help a family or a, a family business team or an organizational team in some way? How do, you, how do you bring that thinking that you learned early on to them? Well, this might sound a little corny, but, you know, I'm driven to live heroically. Now, heroically to some people are the, the, uh, the characters, um, the comic characters that save people's lives, but really the root of being uh, heroic is to 
um, serve another person, to have the strength to serve another person and what they need in their life. So I, I think that's that's really what's driven me to to be heroic in the lives of other people, to make an impact, to help them uh, realize what is possible and to unlock that potential that will get them there. And so that that journey, taking that journey with a person is uh, that drives me. Yeah, so it's interesting, Mike, that you know over over time we've talked a lot about rising leaders in inside uh inside families it's not just the the patriarch and matriarch who have the you know they have the wealth but they've got to pass it down and you know you've wanted to do a lot of work with it with the next generation to empower them to be able to take over the business so i imagine you're having some conversations with them uh, you know sort of around this heroic framework and uh helping them rise up uh, yeah, I, you know, everything I've done in my life has really been because of my personal desire to learn and to grow and to um, and, and to find the answers, critical answers to live a fulfilling life, a life that has meaning and purpose. And so pretty much everything I've done is my own personal journey. Yeah. And so with the rising forums, it's, you know, I just know that the work I do can make such a difference in people's lives, in particular, if they start early um, and break through to some, you know, a lot of people have limitations when it comes to thinking and to, when you're young, break through those limitations into more freedom and to be able to be, find your authentic self, because in your authentic self is what God created you to be. And when you get in sync with that, then that's when I think greatness happens because you were designed to do that rather than live another person's life, to live your own life. Yeah, do you think that's that's really what does limit an emerging leader or 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 a young younger person stepping up is the fact that they actually don't know fully what their what their purpose and meaning for their life is? Yeah, well, you know, Aristotle and I, they talk about who who said this is to know thyself, but which yeah. is true in the Bible and in other other works um, from other religions. And I think you know, if you don't know yourself, I, I kind of wonder how you can be your authentic self. You know, you have to explore yourself. That's kind of the first area of exploration before you explore everything else. But that unfortunately, people. I think see other role models and they want to maybe become somebody they're not because they value what that person is and ends up spending their life trying to be somebody maybe they're not only to realize kind of too late that um, if they were just themselves, it, they would have gotten to the level of greatness and fulfillment that they were would have hoped when they were younger. Yeah, it's interesting you mentioned Aristotle then. I, I had a little chuckle to myself because Aristotle is my spiritual guide. And, and that is partly because of uh, the know thyself, but also he talks a lot about meaning, money and happiness. And that at the end of the day, man is on this earth to find happiness. And that's, that's a lot of, in a way, what we're talking about here as well is it's hard to find happiness i think if if you're if you're chasing something or looking at people uh you know others and what they're doing and, and why they're successful and lining yourself up against them and trying to be them rather than trying to be yourself yeah i think all of us have grown up in our society i think putting our focus on external factors to finding the things that matter most to us where really all of that's found internally. Um, but it takes somebody that is willing to make commitments to do things. And in our day and age, uh, there's too many and so many distractions that cause people to do things that lead them away from um, what really matters most. Yeah, and that, I think this is what we've all got to do is, is, is more work on our 
to some degree, Mike, on our inner journey, and that's what uh, to change the outer world, and and that's what you've you've been clearly been helping people do for the last uh, you know twenty plus years. So why 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 is this such a big issue in 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 wealthy families and families with with businesses that you that you work with? Well, the the advantage of wealth that gives you the capacity to do a lot of things. So if you're wealthy, you have a lot of choices, you have a lot of options, you have a lot of people that want your attention. You know, there is great demand on on uh, everything about somebody that's wealthy. And, you, and therefore you need greater wisdom to discern which uh, choice to make. Yeah. Um, and unfortunately, when you're younger and you come across money and you haven't really been highly developed in, in areas outside of material things, then that could lead to the dark side of money, which books are written on. Uh, yeah. As you know. yeah. Yeah. So in a way, if you if you've come into money early and it's and, and you haven't earned it uh, or fully earned it, it's easy for for the energy of money in a way to cover up. Uh, ever discovering who you are, you can use it to cover up problems and keep on uh, potentially the wrong track and never really be happy. Yeah, somebody said, you know, wealth gives everything to people except the ability to to understand and live through failure and uh, lack. And uh, unfortunately, human beings learn more in the valleys than we do on the mountaintops. So, um, uh, and and so yes, you can learn wisdom from other people, but all of us have a journey, and we're going to be going through those valleys and those mountaintops, and that's all part of it. And instead of looking at it as a negative, we should maybe have a framework to say that's just our journey. That's how we're. That's our badges of honor are earned in those valleys, not on the mountaintops, and that's where we develop our character and our integrity and all the things that are so fundamental to our value system. Yeah, it may be that we're, we're meant to have some of those experiences to then to learn, and that's what's going to make us grow. But you have to have a resilience mindset, I think, to, to deal with that. I went to a meeting one time, you and the guy that was speaking was a fellow whose business and, and he personally went recently went bankrupt. It was back when the Tax Act occurred in the 1980s to change how partnerships were taxed and the tax benefits. And uh, I was wondering why I was there because everybody knew he he was the head of the largest real estate firm uh, in the world that went under. And he got up and he said, you know, I was a golden boy. Everything worked for me. Everything I wanted, I got. Uh, every venture I was in, always successful. And, and then I failed. And what I learned from that is he said, I thought I was invincible. And I learned never do business with somebody that hasn't failed. Yeah, it's interesting. It's a great it's a great American attitude. I think that this country encourages that for so long as, uh, in a way, what I call you failed well. It's not because you've done something particularly bad, but you've you failed well. I, I, where I come from in Australia, if you fail, no one gives you a second chance, which I think is a pity. Uh, and that's why I, I love being in America as well. But I think it's very important. That people have had failures uh, and, and and have learned to tell the story because there's the there's the nugget of gold uh, to pass on to others, but also for them to grow. And, and I think that's uh, important. So, Mike, you do a lot of work with uh, the DNA behavior systems, and you know you're you're more than a student of human behavior now. You're well and truly uh, into it. But you know, in terms of the your your own uh, DNA behavior style, uh, just for our audience, you, you, you're an initiator, uh, very fast paced, uh, creative and risk taking. So just tell us a little bit about how, how those traits play out in you serving a family, being this servant leader for a family. Yeah, I will just mention this relative to that. I've had, I've done a lot of different things in my career. I've not been one of these people who have been in the same career path for 30 or 40 years. And 
and there's been many times in my career because I've failed and failed fairly substantially where I looked at those people and said, gee, that would have been the easy way. And, and I'm not saying easy way that people don't earn, the, the you know, uh, do something of great value by staying with one career path all, all of their career. I was, I was in various career, uh, various companies, various things. And I always wondered why, you know, why I was transitioning. And, um, and so I was very familiar, I became, to answer your question, very familiar with the transition process because that was my career. Yep. And also, you know, in, in the late 1990s, I started meeting with a group of psychologists because people were coming to me about non-financial advice and I was in the financial industry. Um, and I started becoming intrigued but because um, it seemed like people had answers to financial questions a lot easier than to human issues that were going on. And that was their struggling. And so I became real intrigued by that as I became intrigued by a lot of things in my career that had me going different places. So we met for a year to try to figure out how people should live life yeah. and do it successfully in, in a world of exponential change. And of course, that was 22 years ago. And now we know you know, we had, we ain't seen nothing yet back then when it came to exponential change that we see today. And so, look, you know, while I didn't understand it at the time, looking back, the abil ability to be innovative, to understand transitions, live through them, get experience in a lot of different ways that families need advice and counsel on in the context of a family office or that type of environment. Uh, I was being groomed all those years, even though I never saw it like that, for the ultimate aim, the ultimate career, the ultimate thing I was called to do is to work in, in extreme complexity and be able to help people get focus and on where they need to go and to put a system that's sustainable and that would get them where they want to go, not only them, but the generations that follow. And so, um, so that that's really, you know, you ask kind of my wiring. It wasn't as obvious when I was young, was younger, and kind of struggling as I was changing careers. But um, but it really kind of all came together, you know, over the last ten years in particular. It's I don't think it's ever obvious why you're in the moment, particularly when you're when you're younger and, and you and you're you know, on your way coming through or having the having some of the experiences, but it would seem pretty clear now, having had multiple different business experiences and careers, provides you with the wisdom bank to be helping a family on a, on a wide range of fronts. And then you're innovative enough to be able to, as you say, to piece together complex concepts, uh, transactions, insights, situations, uh, and be able to make sense of it and make it into a, uh, a pathway, if you want to call it that, 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 that a family can use to, to operate going forward with that. You can break it all down. Because um, not many people can do that, can reduce complexity and make, it, and make things simple. But yeah. it, it, it seems, Mike, that there's a word in there that you've used that's very interesting. Uh, and that's transition. So maybe just speak to that a little bit more because people go through transitions in their lives. You've gone through them and you, I think you have to be resilient when you, when you go through uh, the transition, but also part of it, I think, is finding your meaning and purpose as well as you go through each one. Exactly. I mean, you have to have clarity about where you want to go and that where you want to go is extremely valuable to you. So yeah. you can make the level of commitment to go through all the, the stuff you have to go through, through a change in uh, a transition. And, and the other thing is you, you have to be willing to open up your mind to new possibilities. I'll give you a, a real quick thing. Early in my career, I was a financial planner in, in a part of the country that wasn't doing well. And uh, I wasn't making much money. And uh, I, a fella came into town and I was hosting him and he said, you know, tomorrow come over to my hotel room. I want to talk to you and bring your wife. So I brought my wife. We walked in this basic hotel room 
And there was a friend of mine and the gentleman that was there. And within seconds, he asked me a question. He says, how much money you make? And I told him, he said, go get a job. And, and it hit me between my eyes because it was the truth. But I was delusional to think, even though I was working, because I wasn't being productive and I wasn't bringing value to people. And therefore, I wasn't making uh, a living. But I thought I was playing. You know, I, I thought yeah. I was doing that. But it took somebody to tell me something that was truthful, that hurt, that I didn't want to hear. And that's even particularly true with people of wealth is because not many people will speak truth to people of wealth and power. And so, um, and I've done that and I've been fired before, but I've done that a lot of times and people said, gee, thanks, you just changed my life. And so I think, um, I think that's a big part of my work and, and a big part of the challenge of dealing with people of wealth is because um, sometimes they feel like they have it all figured out and, but yet they struggle with, when you have a lot of wealth, you could have ultra uh, big problems <laughs> compared to other people. Well, there's a, there's a certain, sometimes for some people, there's a certain arrogance that they've got because they've, they've got a lot of money, whether it came from inheritance or they've gone and made it or a combination of both. And, and they, they do feel they've got it sorted out, but I think as we've also learned, there's a lot of wealthy people that aren't necessarily financially literate or capable actually of really dealing with money uh, for themselves or within the family unit. It's just a, it's just a reality. That doesn't mean they're not smart, but dealing, dealing with money and financial matters is actually hard. And then I suppose the decisions you make when you're, when you're, when you're wealthy can have huge ramifications uh, for yourself and within the family unit. Um, but if you've positioned yourself as uh, somewhat uh, larger than life there, it, it does make it hard to, uh, to be confronted, but it takes a very strong man or woman uh, to do the confronting. And, and what I know is from, you know, and that's one of the things I've always respected in, in, in your DNA style, Mike, is you know, your, your uh, uh, fast pace factor there means you are quite happy, comfortable, you know, taking a problem head on and, and telling somebody that something's wrong. Um, you know, you don't run away from the truth as opposed to there will be others out there that are going to sugarcoat it. And that doesn't help. You know, I think this is a, uh, I'm saying this is a strength for you serving any family. Yeah. But I want to be quick to say this, that the, a person's truth is found within them. Yeah. Uh, and so when I say speaking truth to power wealth, it just means there comes a time where that's appropriate. But from a day-to-day -day standpoint, you know, my job is really to help people discover their own truth, their own path, and to help them along that path, not to the worst thing. And I think this happens maybe too much with professional advisors is because the client's not given a lot of time to really develop their thinking. Uh, when asked questions about very weighty matters, the client usually sometimes say, well, what do you think? And you end up adopting the philosophy, the plan, the values of the advisor rather than you and, and your family, what's best for you. And that's why I think so many people of wealth, when a matriarch and patriarch die, they end up fighting in court over the inheritance because yeah. um, the, the right communications were not done beforehand. And so really, I, I think um, to get down to the your question about DNA, but for people in general, um, I think unless you have really great communication skills and, and have somebody help you develop those communication skills and be able to break through, it's really hard for you to find success and more importantly, sustain success and be happy because, um, uh, you know, life's so challenging. But to be direct on your DNA question, one of the things that came from my work with you was to kind of realize exactly how extreme I am on the, on, you know, I'm not, I'm not in the middle of the bell curve in, in many things, you know, I'm, no. I'm way out in the tails, which, you know, there's some good things about it and there's not so good things about being out there uh, in those extreme positions.
So I think um, I, I'm probably better as a specialist than I'm a general pac practitioner, if you put it in that terms. I, um, yeah, and, and I think, you know, and this is partly for, for our listeners' benefit as well, when you have extreme strengths or an extreme profile like you do, and I have the same, you and I have got pretty similar profiles or styles, and they're very extreme. There are a lot of strengths that you can bring along, but there's also some struggles that that uh, uh, that, that are there that you have to live live with. And you know, part of the journey that we've gone through is is becoming aware of those and learning to to manage them. We're we're human, like everybody else. It doesn't work every day, but that's that's the behavioral that's the that's the journey, and that's you know for us. But that's also what we're you know through those experiences taking others on that guided discovery journey. For them to see this, for them to see this truth for themselves, and I think that's what you're trying to do. And then, if we have to to say something or speak up and say, "No, you're not," you you know, you saw that, but you're not seeing this. That that's where it can sting, but it's also you know it needs to be said uh, at, at at times. But uh, just in Mike, in 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 moving along a little bit more to your to your identity, and and I think you've just said I I I'm a specialist more than I am a general practitioner. That's that's a good statement in its own right. But I think also, you know, what I'm hearing today is in dealing with transitions for families or and and their related businesses and uh, empires, or just even an organization, but dealing with transitions, it seems that dealing with people's mindsets about the trans the, the transition, helping them get clarity to see the world a different way is a big part of what you're doing. It's not just the process uh, that you take them on to, to, to make change sustainable. Yeah, change is difficult when you're just talking about one person. It becomes exponentially more complex when you're talking about a group of people. So there, there's four different areas. One, you gotta figure out where you are right now. You have to figure out where you all wanna go. What are the barriers you're going to encounter along the way? And what are some unintended consequences? And there's been studies done, and I'm not going to drill down in this, but for even for corporations, only about one in three people agree on each of those four different components. Yeah. So we, we do a lot of work in aligning families so that they can move forward. Because what tends to happen is when you don't have that understanding, you don't have a good communications, you don't understand where everybody is, uh, and then you try to make a change, it could quickly become a disaster, um, even with good intentions. Uh, so so it's, it's, it's an art to do it. it. There's science to do it. That's why we're named Da Vinci, because the combination of art and science coming together, um, because I believe that was so important to uh, successful outcomes. So um, yeah, transitions. And, and the thing of it is, you were either get starting or preparing to go into a transition, we're in the transition, or we're coming out and adjusting to the transition. And if you think about that, that's going on in every area of your life, potentially, in all the plateaus, it could be in your personal life, in your spousal relationship, in your family, with your children, with your career, with your money, um, with your business. So, you know, you ask the question, why are people so overwhelmed these days? Is because they're going through transitions at a much faster pace than ever before in human history. And they're doing it simultaneously in different areas of their life. Yeah, I was going to say that it's not it's not a linear uh, it's not a linear thing that you 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 start one transition, go through it, and then uh, have a little rest for a while, and then a, then another one might come. It's constant, and there might be multiple <coughs> transitions in different areas of your life at once that that need to be dealt with. Yeah, you have a family member that all of a sudden needs surgery and three month recovery. That's the transition. That, yeah. You know, you had no idea was coming your way. And, but, you know, so you have involuntary transitions and voluntary transitions. And, you know, so it really takes 
somebody to help you frame all that properly uh, to be able to prepare you. And, um, and there's a lot of psychology that goes into this whole process, which of course is in understanding yourself and how you're wired, which DNA does, yeah, uh, gives you a leg up if you can figure out what what's you know how are other people in this group of people going through transitions wired to experience the transition to move through it to be successful, um, to live through it. So, so so Mike, taking that platform and you know I think there's a lot of help in in giving people clarity there, getting them aligned as they go through the transition, and then providing some kind of sustainable process to to live through that change and 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 ongoing from that but how do you how do you want your clients and people in the community to remember Mike Peduzzi and, and particularly the work that you do how do you want what well, you know sort of where in terms of thinking about your identity and 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 uh that that higher place of being for you and how you wish to be remembered what do you think that is well, I, I saw a movie called the, the Five People. Let me see if I get it right. The Five People You Meet in Heaven. Yeah. And, and uh, long and short of it is uh, this person met some people in heaven that he had an impact on that maybe at the time he didn't realize it. Um, and that's the payoff for me is uh, if if I can break through something that somebody's struggling with or it's preventing them from enjoying life, enjoying their wealth, enjoying their family, um, uh, helping them just have a breakthrough on any type of level in any area of their life. Um, that's what it's about for me. And, um, and money is, for me, money is just the ability for me to improve how I do my work. Uh, it It's... Uh, the the payoff, it, you know, I think the you know it's kind of funny. You you start out life and you struggle to earn money, and then you get to the end of life, and if you're successful, create developing wealth, you struggle figuring out how to give it away, right? So you know it's a struggle either way at both ends of the spectrum. So at the end, for me, it's uh, how you can invest in other people, and um, uh, and the money's nice and, you know, it does do some nice things, but uh, I, I, you know, I, I told you early on, I'm a romantic and that's, it's, it's not about the dollars and cents. It's not about the mechanics. It's not about the processes and structures. It's about the, the human being's heart. I'll, I'll be brief and wrapping maybe this thought up early in my life. Um, I prayed after becoming a Christian, accepting Jesus Christ, I prayed that he would give me the wisdom to be able to help people do it, to do what I'm doing now. And shortly after that, my life basically fell apart. Uh, my wife was in a kitchen fire, burned herself financially. We went through some room. We were just building a house when interest rates were climbing to 17, 18%. Um, uh, the oil business collapsed, which was what the driver was for our local economy. My new business was floundering, you know, and so I went through this thing for a, a couple of years. It was just terrible. And I kept asking God, you know, what is it, God? Why did I go through that? And it was like five years later, I'm leaning up against the door talking to an associate of mine. And it was like he dropped a thought in my mind out of out of the blue. And he said, you know, Mike, if you want to be really successful and help people, you're, you're smart, you know things, but you need to take it from here down to here. And so that's what I'm saying. The, the low points in life is how we can, is our experience where we can come alongside other people that have gone through the same thing. Because if you're trying to help somebody go through something, it's so much more meaningful and helpful when they know you've gone through exactly the same thing. And so those badges yeah. that I talked about that you earn during those difficult parts of life are how you're going to make the impact in people's lives. It's not gonna be from just your book knowledge. It's going to be from what you yourself experienced. So you're authentic in helping people. 
Yeah, I think a lot is about being able, you know, the wisdom comes through being able to share experiences with people is what you're is really what you're saying. And, you know, you're putting you're putting your heart in there. And I think that, you know, what one of the things is that I've seen or heard out of the call is, you know, through providing those experiences, you're helping people remove the the roadblocks so they can break through in a in a in a, in a transition situation yeah to re, to reframe things in a way that allows them to be proactive uh instead of reactive and to be able to see the light at the end of the tunnel because at the end of the tape day people need to have hope if they don't have hope that's why we see the suicide rate what it yeah. is so uh, hopefully I provide a, way, a light of hope to families that are struggling in relationships or struggling in helping the next generation with a leg up or any number of factors that they're experiencing where a lot of times it does seem hopeless, particularly for more intimate things, which they don't know who to go to or where to go to um, for help. And so being able to meet them where their money intersects their humanness, their being, yeah, um, is is so important in dealing with it um, without that context. And so, at the end of the day, what we want to focus on for everybody, including myself, is raising the capitals we have in life—not just money, not just our financial capital, but our human capital our intellectual capital, our spiritual, social capital, and how we deal with other people, and our entrepreneurial capital, which is how do we bring great ideas to people to help them solve their problems, whatever it is, nonprofit, for-profit, or just helping hand. Yeah, so, raise, so raising the human capital of a person to, to help them go through the transition event, uh, you know, to see the, 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 the new way forward, and, and that then you you also after that provide a process for them to do it. Yeah, if you look at the Bible and you look at the heroes of the Bible, a lot of them weren't really heroes all the way through. They needed somebody to come alongside of them and have them see things differently. Gideon hiding in the cave and yeah. the angel saying, mighty man of God, He's saying, Who, who's that? Um, so uh, I think, you know, we just need some people that believe in us, some people that are there totally for us Yeah, uh, that come alongside and say, hey, we could do this together. Yeah, so yeah. really being a family transition guide is, uh, you know, what, what, what you're doing. That's, that's, that's where you're going to, uh, you know, help people on this earth, but also in, in your heavenly life where you'll meet them as well, because that's where, you know, you will have uh, been, been that person of support, experience sharer that uh, has been, vital to their to their life well you know you uh if you think about life life as it says in the bible is just kind of uh, a smoke it 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 goes by so fast it's somebody said it, life when you get older is like a, a roll of toilet paper it you know uh it goes a lot faster towards the end and uh, i think that part of this whole transition the big transition is Think, thinking about life from standing in heaven, looking back, uh, what would you have wanted? Because that's eternity. Here we have yep. a relatively few decades if we're lucky. That's eternity. So, um, so I think if if you have live life with a heavenly mindset, your values shift, and the things that were once important, you know, you have to have to be happy, don't necessarily seem that important when you have that shift in mindset yeah you don't need a lot of money either for that <laughs> yeah so you know um so anyway that i think all of this is talking about transition is really just shifting mindset and um and you know we all i i, I go through intensive personal development of i mean i spend five hours minimum in personal development a week. Um, yeah. So, so, you know, it's a process, it's a journey. It's, you know, 
it's not it's making little micro changes it's not about making big changes you know if you just make break something big down into small enough pieces henry ford said it, anything you could do anything you could be successful in so it's these little changes course changes you just do every day that if you do them consistently will bring you to the outcome you're looking for and yeah. uh, and and so there's that kind of shifting in, in mindset but it's not going to happen automatically it doesn't just drop out of the sky on you. It's something that, you know, you get to a point and say, look, I have this much time. I don't know how much time I have here, but I'm going to be, live it intentionally. I'm going to live it purposefully. And I think when you get that shift in your mind that, you know, every day matters um, somehow, some way, then I think you're on this, the path to some some greatness. Yeah, I think that's an important point as well that you just made there is time. And it, it, it's it's limited, and people have to 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 realize that, and that well, and that can people, be a pressure. It can be a pressure point to make decisions. You know. Yeah. Well, there's four currencies of of life: time, talent, money, and relationships. So, yeah. so with, you know, people of great wealth, to me, time and relationships are the two most important factors that sometimes eludes yeah. them. Um. The, the business, the career part, the money part, they've, they've overcome, they've, they, they've reached a high level in. Uh, but usually when they reach a high level, time and relationships suffer as a yep. relationship aspect of that. So Mike, as we wrap up here, is there anything else that you'd like to, to share with uh, our listeners? As a, as a, a, given you are a provider of wisdom with all of your uh, life experiences, you probably shared a few there at the end, but is there anything you'd like to wrap up with? Yeah, I would say this. Look, everybody, it's up to everybody to have whatever belief system that's they believe and they think is truth. And all I could say in my life is I, maybe my greatest asset is my persistence. And that's really born out of my faith. Yeah. And it, and the way I view myself, if I looked at it from how the, the world may view me, it might be contorted, but I view myself as God sees me, how he, my identity in him. Yeah. And when you look at what he thinks of me and what he thinks of you, uh, that can be a big shift just right there. So I think for me, um, going back to Solomon, you know, he said, vanity, vanity, all is vanity. Here's a guy that had all the wealth in the world, everything a man would lust for, so to speak, in a worldly sense. Yet here he was at the end of his life saying, vanity, vanity, all is vanity. So I, that drove me to say, I don't want to say that at the end of my life. So that took me on my adventure to trying to learn a better way to do life and not to have any regrets when. And my last breath comes. Yeah, so you, you don't I, want to have regrets. Don't have don't have regrets. That's the worst thing. Yeah, I have failures, but I, I don't have regrets. Yep, yep. Uh, well, that's the same for me too, Mike. So, well, thank you so much for spending time with me this afternoon. This has been a a very rich conversation, and I hope lots of families benefit from your wisdom and experiences and insight because. Uh, more need to hear this message and, and and they will be able to get get to that path of having better relationships and being able to use their time better if if, if they hear some of this thank you mike well thank you you it was delightful being with you thank you